and the category is love triangles and friend zone situationships in the lockdown house who's ready <laughs> to the video <laughs> okay guys i know i'm really excited i can't help myself at this point in time i can't control my excitement because this video is one of the very much requested videos on my channel a lot of people have been asking me questions in the comment sections glory what are the love triangles in the house what's going on regarding relationships in the house and i've always wanted to talk about it but i decided to chill for a bit and make sure i get all the facts right and guys now I'm ready for all of you so in this video I'm gonna be telling you guys about all the love triangles in the house how they started what made them stay strong and what made them go south and also the friend zoned people or relationships or situationships in the house guys you need to watch till the end of this video because the things I'm gonna be spilling <laughs> I don't know if you are ready I don't know if you're ready guys so if you're ready guys let's do this first of all take a moment breathe pause this video and click on the red subscribe button to become a part of this family if you're yet to subscribe now while at that if you always want to receive notifications about my videos you know you don't want to stress yourself by refreshing youtube to search for my videos or my content click on the white bell button the one right beside the subscribe button and that is called the post notification bell so whenever i upload a new video you will always be one of the first persons to get the video that said let's go and talk no let's go and shall i <laughs> if it is if it is <laughs> so guys i'm gonna start from the first love triangle that started in the lockdown house this season and it's none other than the ozo dorothy and nengi love triangle now this is how it started when the housemates were newly introduced into the lockdown mansion, right, um, Dorothy was one of those persons that offered her bed to Ozo, you know, because Ozo was the second or the first, I think it was the second housemate that Ibuka introduced into the house, right? So when he came in, he wanted to go and choose a bed space. But because V told him not to, he should be a gentleman about it, you know, he decided not to. And so he got carried away by all the greetings and excitement when all the housemates were coming inside the house and he forgot to go and get his own bed space so after getting his bed um, after everybody got their bed space also remember that oops he has not gotten his bed space you know so it was an issue for him he even dragged bed space with tricky tea so at the end of the day tricky tea took the bed and also took the pillow so dorothy was one of those persons or the only housemate that offered her own bed space to Ozo to share with him and that was how she won the heart of Ozo. And according to Ozo, nobody else in the house in the house can take Dorothy's position in his heart because in the midst of all the hula balu and all the excitement of being in the in Big Brother house season five, Dorothy was the only housemate that extended that hand of kindness to him. And that was the beginning of their relationship. So these two people were very, very close in the house, are still close in the house. And then when Ozo saw Nengi, <laughs> There were twinkle twinkle little stars up over on his head you know like guys he got really really excited and then they were playing the introductory game that was the first night on the night of the launch of the big brother and justice in five show you know and each of the housemates were talking about um, what's your name what you like what is your spec and that was when Ozo said that his spec is light-skinned is very much attracted to very very light-skinned girls that are very very physically beautiful and he was referring to Nengi and then he said like Nengi so guys that was the beginning of it all the moment Ozo mentioned that the rest of the housemates they started instigating and pushing and encouraging Ozo and Nengi to be in a relationship but for Ozo at that point in time Ozo is the sort of guy that would rather be friends with a girl first before making his intentions known to her if he wants to date her or not you know so the pressure from the rest of the housemates on Ozo was for him to you know ask Nengi out they should become a pair and a couple in the house but Ozo was not ready for that so out of the pressure of the house he went further to tell Nengi that um, I think I fancy you and then he was like, oh, I know you like me and he was like, who told you I like you? You know, I just said yeah, I fancy you. We've not gotten to that stage yet when I like you and so Nengi being who she is pretty smart She started playing hard to get right and then it was when she started playing hard to get with Ozo that Dorothy 
started getting upset and irritated so dorothy being a very very defensive and protective friend you know she started trying to protect ozor from dorothy because at the end of the day Dorothy realized Nengi's games. She realized that Nengi had the strategy of leading the guys in the house on and then when she gets their attention, she gets their interest, she abandons them and moves on to the next opponent or the next target. Yeah, target is a word. She moves on to the next target, you know. So, Dorothy and Ozo, um, rather, Dorothy and Nengi, they talk cold, they greet each other in the house, so, but <laughs> both of them knows in their deepest heart of hearts that they don't like each other. Dorothy does not like Nengi because she feels like, as a woman, I know your games, I know your ploy, I know your strategy. You're trying to play my friend, Ozo, and I'm not going to let you do that. Nengi, on the other hand, does not like Dorothy because she feels like Dorothy is out to spoil a game. And so she started giving her attention to other guys in the house. Ozo, on the other hand, is in a dilemma because Dorothy has, not, has been nothing but really, really nice and kind and has always been there for him in the house you know so he doesn't want to offend dorothy but he also does not want to let nengi go because nengi already is already having a lot of fun with other guys in the house right now also on the other hand he's still maintaining his stance with nengi that i have not asked you out yet and nengi is like what do you want you always get upset when i'm with other people you you pick offense you don't even want to talk to me you avoid me what do you want so guys now the matter was still try to set to so Mm? these two people they still have not made up their mind they are still confused as to if they want to date or not Ozo is still saying that he has not asked Nengi out yet but his emotions and everything we can obviously see that everything is on the floor crawling towards Nengi that is the first triangle in the house now guys the second love triangle in the house is Nengi, Ozo and Prince now this one is an overflow a continuation of the first love triangle now, this is what it is. Nengi, as a result of the fact that she was throwing herself at Ozo and Ozo was not giving her that attention that she needed, Nengi decided to start giving her attention to Prince. She was going to give her attention to Kid Wire, but Kid Wire had other love interests. I'm coming to that one. Now, Nengi started giving her attention to Prince. They became very close up to the point that on the night um, that they played um, Truth or Dare, Concentration, Concentration, Spinning the Bottle and all of that, um, Prince was dead to pick a female housemate that he likes and then demonstrate to the rest of the housemates his first sexual position, right? And Prince picked Nengi. Now, Ozo is and became upset from that because he believed that Nengi had a choice. She would have chosen to drink a shot instead of agreeing to doing that demonstration with Prince. But then Nengi had her own strategy. She was upset that I've been throwing myself at this guy. He was not giving me attention. So if any other guy wants my attention, I will give that guy my attention just to get back at him. And so Nengi went forward and did what she did with Prince. And what she did with Prince, that was what struck up that closeness between both of them. And then that was the very day that Ozo got very upset and started avoiding Nengi moving forward from that day, you know. So the relationship has been very, very crazy. So now, um, how is it a triangle? It is a triangle because Ozo still has... A bit of affection or should i say a truckload of, um, of affection for nengi nengi silently likes ozo but she's giving him the cold shoulder cold shoulder guys forget all my blunders so i must give you guys this gist today even grammatical error cannot stop me from giving you this gist today now prince on the other hand who is entrapped in this triangle has no freaking idea whatsoever that Nengi dragged him into the triangle because she wants to torture Ozo, she wants to get back at Ozo. Prince has no idea. In his own mind though, he likes Nengi. He wants Nengi to be his girlfriend in the house. So he has been making his moves, making his moves, making his moves. But Nengi has told him several times that I cannot date you. I cannot date your kind of person. You are everywhere. You don't have loyalty, blah, blah, blah. And Nengi's definition of loyalty is you are not going to associate yourself with any other girl emotionally in the house. You're not going to flirt with any other girl in the house. And if anything happens to anybody in the house, you must always have my back here 100%. That is Nengi's definition of loyalty. So Prince is still checking her, toasting her, razzling her up. She is still giving him the cold shoulder. Now, guys, that is why it is all a triangle. And currently, also, um, Nengi 
is going back to have conversations with Ozo as to what happened and both of them are still trying to see if they can find a common ground on becoming friends again or probably becoming lovers but Nengi is holding a ground that she has a lover outside the house so she cannot date anybody in the house she can only be friends with people in the house but she's doing contrary to what she's saying because um, whenever she's with Prince, she goes the extra mile of being physical with Prince, but she's never physical with Ozo. So guys, that is the second love triangle. There's a lot of things, details attached to it. If you want to find out more, check my previous videos and you will find out more about those things. Now guys, the third love triangle in the house that also involves Frenzoni. <laughs> A very brutal and aggressive Frenzoni. Huh? Is the love triangle that's happening between Prince Nengi, Tolani Badge, and Watoni? Guys, this one don't come past triangle. I think it can become maybe quadruple or square. Let's call it love square because there is Prince Nengi, Tolani Badge, Watoni. So it's a love square, not even a love triangle if you want to go by shapes and sizes. Now, Prince who is legit interested in Nengi but does not know that Nengi pulled him into her space just to pepper and tension Ozo is seriously chasing after um, Nengi but then ever since Nengi started giving him his coming, his coming, I'm not sure I might like you, I might not like you he started having affections towards Wathoni and started getting close to Wathoni now Tolani Badge, on the other hand, is involved in this square because she likes Prince to a fault. In fact, she's, she has a mad ass crush on him. Prince is the perfect example of the kind of spec that she likes in the house or probably outside as well. But she has talked to Prince on three occasions and Prince keeps on friend zoning her that I like having you around but not for a relationship. And Tolani Badge is not having it. So as a result of that, Tolani Badge is now beefing Wathoni. Yes, she's beefing Wathoni, giving Wathoni negative energies, giving Wathoni a lot of cold shoulder. And funny enough is she and Wathoni, they used to be very, very close. She, Wathoni and Tricky T and Bryce, they had a very, very strong relationship. But then all of a sudden, because she realized that Prince is now spending more time with Wathoni and not her, she decided to start beefing Watoni and Watoni too, you know, reciprocated the beefing. Not the only ones have beef, you know, so they are all beefing each other. Now, guys, that is the third love triangle. And how is Nengi involved in that triangle? Nengi is involved in that triangle because <laughs> Watoni, who also likes Prince, somehow is upset that Nengi is taking um, Prince's night time because, guys, Prince had to share himself with. Like, guy is booked and busy. During the day, in the mornings, he has conversations with Watoni. In the afternoons, he has conversations with Tolani Badge. Not even serious conversations, but what's up, what's popping, how are you? And then at night, na night shift though, all through the night till 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, it is Nengi's turn. So guy is fully booked and busy. You cannot blame a player. A player is always, always busy. So don't blame the player. Blame the game. Now, love triangle, or should I call it friend zone triangle, number four is between or amongst Tochi, Tolani Badge, and Wathoni. Now, guys, Tochi started feeling left out of the old love relationship, couple, couple, ship, ship, booed up people kind of click. And he started having conversations with Kid Wire to advise him on how to talk to both Wathoni and Tolani Badge. According to him, he fancies these two people. He likes them. He likes Wathoni because she's very cool, but he does not really, 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 really like her that much. You know, he's keeping her as a substitute, as a reserve because it is Tolani Badge that he actually has strong feelings for because he likes the way she's confident and he likes the fact that she's very, very active, you know. So according to Tochi, Tolani Badge would fit perfectly into the kind of couple he wants to be in the house. But Tolani Badge has vehemently said it one million times. Tochi is totally out of the equation. That Tochi should not even be in it. That he does not like Tochi like that. I beg, I beg, I beg. Like... She, it seems like she's actually disgusted by the guy, so she doesn't even want to get close to the guy. So when Kidwaya would advise Tochi, oh, go and give her a compliment and talk to her, have conversations. <laughs> the lady badge is always paying attention to the guy like this. You know, like she has that look of disdain on her face. Her countenance is never at ease when Tochi is around her. She doesn't even want Tochi around her, but she keeps taking herself to Prince, and Prince does not want her. Wathoni, on the other hand, Tochi, whenever he tries having a close time you know with um, Tolani Badge and it doesn't work 
he moves his attention to Wathoni. Wathoni, on the other hand, likes Prince and Tricky T, so she's not even interested at all. But Tricky T does not like Wathoni in return because, okay, he likes her, but he cannot date her because, according to him, he has a serious, long coming or long standing relationship outside the house, and his girlfriend is watching the show 24 7. So that one is that one. Now, guys, moving on to the next, should I call it, um, to the next love triangle. The next love triangle is um, Tolani Badge, Prince Watoni, and Nengi. Now, this one, Tolani Badge, is the one that is actually trying to push for a relationship with Prince. But Prince, on the other hand, is not interested in her. Now, Prince was saying last night that Nengi is very cunning. Nengi is not giving him attention and Nengi is playing hard to get and is hopping from one guy to the other in the house. So Prince currently has said that he has he is going to give Nengi an ultimatum that if by this weekend Nengi does not show him any interest anymore, then he is going to focus his attention on Watoni and tell Nengi to stop coming to his space and stay away from him. So guys, this one is a long crazy love triangle and friend zone triangle at the same time because Tolani Bad is currently beefing Watoni because of Prince. Capish? And Watoni is also beefing Nenge because of Prince. Oh, this one loud gone. He loud! And now guys, the last but not the least friend zone or love triangle that we have in the house. And this one is the one that is currently giving me headache the most. It is the one between Erika Kidwire and Lekong. Guys, this one there, eh? <laughs> hey God. Now this one is playing a lot on Lekong's emotions because Lekong started out as friends with Erika in the house, okay? Now, Lekong likes Erika, they have very good conversations together. Erika has confessed one million times to almost everybody in the house that she's mentally attracted to Lekong, that she has very, very mentally stimulating conversations with Lekong and she loves him for that, you know? But then, on the other hand, Erika is strongly attracted to Kidwire because according to her, she likes guys who are big. She likes guys who are very, very muscular. She likes guys who are very, very, you know, I don't know, but she's just physically attracted to Kidwire. And Kidwire, on the other hand, is also attracted to her physically, but Kidwire is a mad flirt. He flirts with literally all the females in the house, you know. So Erica has tried to change him. She has tried to tell him several times that if you want to be with me, you have to stop flirting. But Kidwire cannot change from who he is. Abby, a leopard cannot change from his pots. So Kidwire is with Erica. He's very, very protective of their space, but he keeps on flirting with the rest of the other female housemates, right? So Erica has resigned to fate because she's physically attracted to Kid Wire. So what happens is she engages in kissing, touching. She's very, very physical and goes all out with Kid Wire. In fact, the other day I put out a video of how Kid Wire was doing this to her, you know, at night under the sheets. Now, Lekon, on the other hand, is very, very sad. He's not happy. And guys, Lekon has become a shadow of himself because the Lekon that we used to know on the show is always selling himself, always selling his talent, always advertising his self and creativity in the house. But ever since he made his intentions known to Erica on Sunday night, you know, he told Erica that he likes her a lot. He wants them to be an item in the house and even outside the house, you know. And Erica told him off that, listen, eh, don't stop trying, you know, but for now, I like you mentally, I'm attracted to you mentally, but I'm physically attracted to Kidwire. And to add Pepe to injury, oh my God. Erica now had that gym gym action at night under the sheets that very night that Lekong made her feelings known to him. Now, Erica and Kid Wire's own relationship all started with the truth of their game as well. Now, initially, Kid Wire was very much attracted to Wathoni, right? He was attracted to Wathoni, but all the intentions he had with Wathoni was just to, you know, probably have a fling with her and dump her in the house. But then, Erica came into the picture by forming that her Nollywood crying session. And then Kidra was the one that was petting her and was assuring her that he was going to have her back in the house, blah, 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 blah. And that was how they both became very, very close. And also, Erica grew interested in Kidwire immediately after they had that get to know me session. 
Kid Royal mentioned about how his father was a billionaire, how his father provided everything for them. So there are two reasons why Erica is attracted to Kid Wire. He's a rich kid from a rich home. He has a secure future and he's also very, very look, good looking and sexy. And Tochi also affirmed the same thing in the house that Erica is an evil girl that what she's looking for in the house is in this house and she has found it. And he was referring to Kid Wire, you know. So currently in the house, Erica is a strong item with Kid Wire. But Lacon is not happy about it. So Lacon keeps going around in the house, having conversations with every Dick, Tom, Dick, and Harry, and any housemate that cares to listen. That oh, Erica has broken his heart. He likes Erica, this and that. And the night that Kid Wire and Erica were having their mm -mm session, Lacon was wide awake. He was watching them. He was hearing Erica moan. So Lacon feels disrespected, and he has told Erica yesterday that listen. I don't want to be close to you anymore. I'm going to give you your space. And Erica is sad about it. But Erica is not doing anything to remedy the situation. So it seems like Erica is friend zoning Lacon, but Lacon is not able to have accept his defeat. You know, so it's a problem for him. And Kidway, on the other hand, oh my guy no sendo. Because for him, Erica is his property. So he is all well and good. And for him, he doesn't see anything that's going wrong anytime soon. So he has Erica, his prize, and he is still flirting with Wathoni in the house. So ladies and gentlemen, these are all the triangles in the house. Um, currently, it's really, really going strong. It's going hot. So as I have said, I am looking forward to seeing how this whole thing is going to play out on the show. Guys, what do you think about all these triangles? Let me know in the comment section below, and I will do well to respond to all of you. That said, that's all for this particular episode of Frank Speaking with Glory Elijah. I will bring you more juicy details much later. Have an amazing day. Bye.